to Daily Manor, brought to you by St. Mark right here in Orlando. And my name is Terrence Gray, and I'm humbly honored to have the chance and the privilege to share with you in God's Word once again today. Uh, we are still inside of the uh, 14th chapter of the Acts of the Apostles, and we're now at verse number 8, and uh, we're going to read down through verse number 20. And I ask that you will listen attentively to the word of the Lord. The Bible says in Lystra there was a, there sat a man crippled in his feet, who was lame from birth and had never walked. He listened to Paul, and as he was speaking, Paul looked directly at him, saw that he had faith to be healed, and called out, Stand up on your feet. At that, the man jumped up and began to walk. When the crowd saw what Paul had done, they shouted in the Laconian language, the gods have come down to us in human form. Barnabas they called Zeus, and Paul they called Hermes because he was the chief speaker. Hermes because he was the chief speaker. The priest of Zeus, whose temple was just outside the city, brought bulls and wreaths to the city gate because he and the crowd wanted to offer sacrifices to them. And the them is to Paul and Barnabas. When the apostles Barnabas and Paul heard of this, they tore their clothes and rushed out into the crowd, shouting, Men, why are you doing this? We too are only men, humans like you. We are bringing you good news, telling you to turn from those, these worthless things to the living God who made heaven and earth and sea and everything in them. In the past, he let all nations go their own way. Yet as he has not left himself without testimony, he has shown his kindness by giving you rain from heaven and crops in their season. He provides you with plenty of food and fills your heart with joy. Even with these words, they had difficulty keeping the crowd from sacrificing to them. Then some Jews came from Antioch and Iconium and won the crowd over. They stoned Paul, dragged him outside the city, thinking he was dead. But after the disciples had gathered around him, he got up and went back into the city. The next day, he and Barnabas left for Derby. Thus far, the word of God. I want y'all to hear, <laughs> um, hear me say to you that there, there's some interesting Moments in when I read the Bible that just makes me go like, wow, it, it, it was just that deep. To know that Paul and Barnabas are teaching. Paul and Barnabas are communicating the gospel. They're communicating it to the point that a brother who is in church, who had been somewhat of a cripple, hears the word and through faith, gets on his feet and begins to walk. Signs, miracles taking place. People believe they're coming to affirm the power of God, accepting the teachings. But that bug that we bumped into yesterday and the day before, that jealousy thing, still lingering. And it has come from Antioch and Iconium. And they've come to raise trouble. And the reason for the trouble is because the crowd, upon seeing Paul and Barnabas and the power that was exuding from them and the words going forth from them, were trying to therefore claim that they were godlike or gods. They called Barnabas Zeus and Paul Hermes. And they were getting ready to begin to worship them and to honor them as deity. Even the priest of Zeus comes in and is prepared to honor Barnabas and Paul. Uh, and, and, and it got to the place where Paul and Barnabas was saying no. And here's a time to shout. Uh, because ultimately what Paul and Barnabas says is, you're not going to make us God's enemy. 
We know our place. We're not trying to be God. We're not trying to take God's glory. We're not trying to take God's light. Our job is to let our light so shine so that men and women can see the good work and give glory not to us, but to the Father. And so he's quite clear. I mean, we're not going to take that. They're pushing that away. They're not doing what is ultimately seen by a brother by the name of Nebuchadnezzar in Daniel, who begins a process of talking about what he had done as he vaunted himself up against God to imply that everything that he beheld was through his hand. And God then strikes him down. In essence, children of God, don't ever think that when you are being able to be used by God, that it's designed for you to receive credit. No, let the credit, let all the glory, let all the honor, let all the praise, let it all go back to God. That's why you hear me saying, let the Lord's name be praised. And I want to encourage the children of God that when these persons found themselves trying to make Paul and Barnabas Zeus and Hermes, and they pushed it back, it all the more incited the jealousy. So these people from Antioch, these people from Iconia, come in and stir up some people, and they end up stoning Paul. Wow. Wow. Remember Paul left from Iconium in the last chapter. If you remember, he left there because there was word that he was going to get stoned. And the people left from that region to come to follow him all the way over in an attempt to fulfill it. So, hey, Paul and Barnabas get stoned. And they drag Paul's body outside the city. If you want to see reasons to shout, it's because the people dragged him out of the city and they didn't bury him. They just dropped him off. They left him for dead. They left him on the side of the road. It's over. Now, ask yourself how many people have looked at you and already counted you out and said it was over and that there was no way you would come back. You got any stories like that? Can anybody attest to people doing that to you? Well, children of God, you ought to be able to shout them to God with a voice of triumph. And here's why. Because the Bible says it was when they had left them and some people who were disciples and followers of the Lord Jesus Christ who came and stood around the bodies of Paul. That Paul got up, got up from the ground. And what he did was he went back to the same place that had just stoned him. Now, the Bible doesn't say he stayed, but he did go back. He didn't, he didn't run out of town. No, he went back to town to give validation that what you have tried to do didn't work. Every now and then, you have to go back and show the devils and show the people that have tried to kill you it didn't work. And Paul gives us a reason to bear witness to the fact, here it is, what they meant for evil, God will work it out for your good. And going back, he was able to add more to the body of Christ because they can say, well, God, after all of that stoning, out of all of that brutality, number one, he still lives. And number two, he came back to give validation of his life. Well, don't act up now. Paul is just following the example of Jesus the Christ. Jesus, they hung on a cross called Calvary. He suffered, he bled, and he died. They put him in a borrowed tomb. They counted him out and that it was over. But on the third day, he got up from the grave with all power in his hand and proved that he wanted to leave living evidence that I was dead, but I am alive, and I am alive forevermore. Oh, I'm out of time, but never out of word, but I want to thank you for your time. Thank you for this opportunity to share the word with you. I love you and I miss you. Look forward to our sharing again tomorrow.